Hey, in this video, I will walk you through my process for creating this Cartoon Network logo animation. But before diving in, let's take a moment to break down the parts of the animation. Animation starts with the CNN flying into place, followed by the black and white blocks popping in one at a time. Next, there's a brief pause before the blocks break apart, revealing a yellow goop and the Courage the Cowardly Dog character before they snap back together. And last, the Cartoon Network text pops in. The first step will be to animate the CN block's entrance. If you'd like to follow along, I have linked the starter file with the assets already added. Before I dive in, I'm going to turn off the courage and text layers so I can focus in on just the CN blocks. I'm going to start by animating the C, so I'm going to go into the first group and add a move keyframe at frame 4 to mark its final positioning. And then I will go to the start of the timeline and add a new keyframe, and now I will drag the C up. Tip, holding one finger down while you drag something will enable snapping so it moves in a straight line. Next, I'll repeat the previous steps with the N. So I'll add a keyframe at frame four and then go back to the start of the timeline and add a new keyframe. And then this time I'll drag the N down so the letters are flying in from different directions. Next, I'm gonna animate the blocks so they pop in. I'll start by going to the black box and moving it back so it starts at around frame three. Next, I'll add a keyframe at frame nine to mark its final scale. Next, I'll go to the start of the timeline and add a new keyframe, but this time I'm going to set the scale to zero. Next, I'm going to add a keyframe right after the second one, and I will scale up the black box a little. Next, I'll move this keyframe in between the first two keyframes. This way, the block will overshoot out before it settles into its final size, which will give it that pop-in effect. Now, I'm going to repeat those steps with the white block, though I want it to pop in a little later, so I'm actually going to offset everything a couple frames back. So I will start by moving the white block to frame 5, Next, I'll add a keyframe at frame 11 and then go to the start of that layer to add a new keyframe, which I will use to set the opacity as zero, just like what I did with the previous block. And just like with the previous block, I'll go to the next frame after the second keyframe and scale up the white block. Next, I'll move that keyframe to frame eight. Now I'm going to play back the animation so I can review how everything is looking so far. I recommend reviewing your animation as you go so you don't have to make a lot of fixes at the end. The next step will be to animate the blocks breaking apart and then snapping back together. For this part, I will be keyframing the actual group so the animation is applied to both the letters and the blocks. Starting with the C block, I'm going to go to the 1 second and frame 7 mark and add a keyframe to set the current position. Next, I'll go back two frames and add a new keyframe and I will drag the group over and I'm going to just rotate the group a bit. Next, I'll go to the next frame and I'll add a keyframe. Now I will move the C block in some. Next, I'll go to the two second mark and add a new keyframe to mark the current position. This will create a hold in the animation as the last two keyframes have the same value. Now I want to bring the C block back to its original position, so I'm going to add a new keyframe before the first keyframe and drag it to the two second and frame four mark. And to add more interest to this movement, I will have the block overshoot a little before it settles into the final position. So I'm going to add a keyframe after the last keyframe, and I will adjust it so the X value is negative 302, and then I'm going to drag that to frame 2. And now I'm going to repeat those same steps with the end block.
And once done, I'll play back to review how the animation looks. In the next step, I will draw out the yellow goop animation and add in the character pop-in. So the first thing I will do is drag over the character and position it so the image will be visible during the time the blocks are split apart. And I'm going to keep that layer hidden for now so I can focus on drawing the yellow goop. I'm going to use the studio pen brush and make sure my color is set to yellow. To start out, I will make sure that I'm on the blank track below the blocks and enter flipbook mode. Next, I'm going to make sure I'm on the first frame that shows the blocks are split apart. And I will draw the first frame of the group. Starting out, I want to make it more goopy, but as I go to the second frame, I'll start smoothing it out a little. And in the third frame, I will adjust my drawing as the blocks are shifting in position. Next, I will go to the next frame and redraw the goop. Since I want the goop to become taunt so it looks like it pulls the blocks back together, I'm going to flip through to find that last frame before the blocks snap together. And on this frame, I will draw the goop but I'll have it be very taunt. Now I'm going to go back to the blank frame and using the onion skins as a guide, I will draw the goop in between the previous frame and the final frame. Next, I'll take a moment to review the animation and make any adjustments as needed. Once satisfied, I will group all the frames and turn on the character layer. Next, I'm going to skim through the timeline to review how the character fits over the goop, which shows me that I will need to adjust the size and position as the goop changes. So I'll add a keyframe in the middle of the layer, and then I'm going to go to the start of the layer and add a new keyframe and I will scale down and reposition the character. This will also help create the illusion that Courage is popping in. Last, I'm going to hover over the last part of the layer, and I notice that I don't need the duration to be this long, so I will shorten it by one frame, and I will add a new keyframe at the two seconds mark. Now I can scale down the character and move him around until I get him in that right spot. Once satisfied, I will play back the animation to see how it's all looking. The last step will be to animate the text below the CN blocks. I'll start by turning on the visibility of the Cartoon Network layer, and then I'll move it back to the two seconds and frame five spot in the timeline. Next, I'm going to go to frame 9 and add a keyframe to mark its final positioning. Next, I'll go to the start of the layer and I'm going to add a new keyframe and set the scale to 0.2 so it's going to be 20% of its original size. Now, I'll add some overshoot to the scale by adding a keyframe behind the final keyframe and scaling up the text. Next, I'll drag that new keyframe to the middle of those previous two keyframes. To make the animation a little more seamless, I will have the text fade in as it scales up. So I'll go to the start of the layer and add an opacity keyframe and set the opacity to zero. Next, I will go to the same frame as the second scale keyframe and I'll add a new opacity keyframe and keep the opacity at 100%. This way, it'll have kind of a nice fade in as it pops in. And that's it. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to check out some of my other Procreate Dreams tutorials. Bye for now.